All right, guys, the day has finally come. We are doing a Morse code key video, and it's been a long time coming. I'm super excited to finally bring it. This is some of my favorite type of content on YouTube, so I'm excited to bring it to you guys, and I hope it can help some people out there that are maybe just getting into CW. At one point, not too long ago, I was watching uh, Morse code videos and paddle videos, trying to figure out what I was gonna buy as my first key. And uh, it makes me super excited to think that maybe someone out there watching this is in that same situation. Because only a few months later, I have a pretty, uh, I'll call it ridiculous collection. And uh, CW is a big part of my daily life now. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. So excited to bring this video to you guys. I hope as a result, I can drive sales and, uh, and people can uh, go out and, and buy paddles, especially people that don't own a paddle yet. I have no relationships whatsoever with any of these manufacturers. Uh, I definitely am not, you know, there's no type of affiliate stuff going on. Um, I, I doubt any of them even know I have a YouTube channel. My channel's pr pretty small. So, uh, yeah, I, I just love CW and I want as many people to get into it as possible. So, uh, you guys know that I got into Morse code uh, kind of beginning of the year. I actually bought a straight key right off the bat, that little Puda key, uh, Amazon. Some of you guys know, I think Coax and Camp Stools, Kentucky Fried Hand, a, a few YouTubers um, use that paddle. I actually returned it because I thought it was defective. I bought a trainer and I didn't know that there was like a menu to ch select key type. I didn't even know there were key types. I just thought it was like, it wouldn't send a dit. It was just sending DAWs. It's kind of an embarrassing story, but that's what happened. And Again, I didn't understand that there were different types of keys. Within a few days of me really immersing myself in the subject following my uncle uh, K7CO's video, I obviously became aware there were different types of paddles and different types of keys. I got a uh, iambic paddle and I'll never forget that feeling of like a doll and a dit just with clicking a button. I think I said out loud to myself, you've got to be kidding me. Because I was on a CW Moore straight key um, and it was a challenge for me. Now I've read Chris Rakowski's book, The CW Way of Life. I'm not a reader, but I read that book in like two days and he's a big proponent of learning on a straight key. A lot of people, if you have those opinions, great, but I'm so glad I got on an iambic paddle pretty quick. And I'm actually going to share a little bit of a story. I'm going to hyperlink two major influential videos, um, for me getting into paddles and having the collection I do today. The first one is K9KJ. He does a full overview of his videos. Um, I love that video. That was, that's kind of what gave me a little bit of an introduction into CW keys and some of the, almost, I think the entire collection I have was influenced by that video. So I'm, I, I think I have a few keys he doesn't and he has a bunch of keys I don't, but a lot of the keys I have are similar to what K9KJ has. Um, and he just has a cool channel. So uh, shout out TJ, check out K9KJ, CW fans. The CW Way of Life. Actually, what's his channel called? Um, I think it's just called K9KJ CW. Let me pull this up. Yeah, CW fans. That's right. So uh, check out K9KJ if you haven't. And then the other video was from Christian Herter, who uh, we have a vacuum upstairs. That's pretty bad timing. Hopefully you guys don't hear that. Hopefully it's not too loud. Um, but I appreciate vacuuming going on above. That's, that's great. The next video was from Christian Herter, who's a CW ops instructor, really random. I met both Christian Herter and TJ K9KJ like 10 minutes apart, unplanned at Hamvention. And those were like the two guys that I recognized and the two guys that I shook their hand. And it was really, really fun because they were both extremely friendly and they were so excited to hear that I was a new CW operator and just getting into CW. And I don't think they realized at the time when I told them, like they did have a huge impact on me. But Christian Herter, he just filmed some YouTube videos for his CW Academy class. And uh, he had, he just filmed them for his class. So he was laughing that I told him I wasn't in his class, but I was watching him. And one of the things in the CW Officer CW Academy is they say, in Christian's video, I'll hyperlink it. He says something along the lines of, uh, straight keys don't work very well. <laughs> Uh, and, and I hope I'm not misquoting him, but that's a really, that's probably going to be super triggering to some people. Um, but you know, in a modern day context compared to an iambic paddle, that that's absolutely true. Um, iambic paddles, uh, there it's, it's an automated way of, 
of, I could do a bunch of analogies, but I won't, you guys get it. And that's for me as, as someone learning CW, I needed to hear that. That was a powerful message for me to hear. And the rest is history uh, with Canine KJ in that video. And then the CW Academy saying, Hey, we don't even allow straight keys in our, in, in our instruction. If you're going to be a member. And I, I was, I went, I took the intermediate class and, and got my little certificate after two months. And uh, I'm glad I did so with an iambic paddle. Um, now, I want to say, with all of that being said, I have a very deep interest right now in returning to straight keys and returning returning to bugs. I actually was bidding on a bug that I lost the bid for uh, on eBay. And I would love that to be part of the repertoire moving forward. But up till now, it isn't. None of the, none of the keys I'm going to show you guys today are bugs or straight keys. But uh, don't be surprised if you see that on the horizon. And I do understand that that's going to be harder for me to adapt to. It's much easier to go from straight key or bug to an iambic paddle than it is vice versa. And I understand that. So welcome to the video. Excited to join it. The format of the video today is going to be a couple things. I have them written down here. The first one, um, I am going to cover my favorite paddles at the end. I love all of my paddles, but I'll share with you kind of the two or three that I like the most or I like to send on the most or the ones I just like to look at. Uh, I like to send on all of them, but some of them, the aesthetic, I appreciate maybe more than others. The last one, or sorry, the next one is going to be, I'm going to make some recommendations for new buyers. I'll probably have two, I'm going to call them budget keys just because they're the least expensive of my collection that are stellar. So if you're looking to get your first key, I want to give you a couple of options at the end of the video. And then the last one, just before we dive into it, um, a, a big consideration I had to make for this video was do I want to cover the money side of things? And I decided that I am going to discuss uh, dollar signs. I am going to include a spreadsheet that shows the cost ballpark, right? This is obviously tied to a specific point in time and that can change. The dollar could fluctuate. A lot of these we're, tra we're talking about uh, exchange rates with the Euro. And um, you know, this is what I paid for the keys, but I want to quickly highlight that uh, money and budgets, that's a sensitive topic. And I'm, I'm very sensitive to that. And I understand that everyone is in a different situation relative to that topic. So my request is, and I think this goes without saying, but I do want to just preface the video with it. My request is please be respectful in the comments uh, as it relates to anything with money, uh, if, you know, to each other, to me. Um, this video isn't about, hey, look how much I spent or didn't spend on XYZ Paddle. Um, that, that's not what this is about. Uh, I'm trying to put content out there that can, uh, you know, provide people a positive experience with learning about Morse code or CW. That's been my experience as a new CW operator is there's some really positive, wholesome content out there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cover some of the money side of things. Uh, if I see comments that I just don't think are necessary or appropriate, I'll probably remove them and that's okay. We can still be friends. You can still subscribe, but um, anything on the money front of things, let's just kind of maybe navigate discussion away from that. Uh, I understand that you could go to like XYZ ham fest and maybe haggle price and get a specific deal. Um, I just, that whole topic as a whole, I know I'm, I'm kind of being ambiguous right now, but yeah, I think you guys get what I'm saying. Let's just, let's just be respectful and consider it there. Um, you, you don't need a hefty, you don't need to be, you know, uh, a rich man or, or have an insane income to purchase a really quality Morse code key that'll la last you a lifetime. So uh, yeah, excited to dive into it. We'll jump into the video. All right, guys, this is my HA8KF paddle from Hungary. Uh, the vendor, uh, Imre Pop, I don't know if I can say his Hungarian name correctly. I actually did work directly with him, though. Um, but I do want to highlight that he does have a distribution agreement with DX Engineering. And these keys can be purchased directly from DX Engineering. He does round, square, and a blue and red paddle. He also does a single lever, which really interests me. I might grab a single lever from him. You guys know I like to collect both. But this is one of the first paddles I ever got. Um, and something I did like is he actually was able to get my call sign engraved. 
Um, you guys know I like to have my call sign on my paddles. Not not all of my paddles have it, but a good majority of them do. Um, there is his email if you do want to reach out directly. Uh, but yeah, this is a this is a beast. The first thing I have to say about this paddle is it is by far my heaviest paddle. This thing weighs over four pounds, which is that's a lot. Uh, I don't think I have a single other key that's over four pounds uh, or near four pounds. Maybe a couple that are near it, but uh, this thing isn't going anywhere. Um, it's also one of the largest. It's it's a pretty big key, which doesn't bother me at all. I like it to be big and heavy. Uh, this is just a great paddle. It does have a really, really good feel. I will say the adjustments, if I had to rank keys, and I'll probably talk about this on each one, the adjust adjustments on this one, they're not, I want to be clear that none of them are hard to do, but some keys are just literally with your fingers, you can adjust them. Others, they require some additional adjustments with these like set screws. So he does have some set screws in here, and that does require some additional adjusting uh, time. But once you get it set, my experience is this key is good to go. Um, really, really love this key. I do want to say he was a joy to work with. He does work ex exclusively in Hungarian, so I did use a translation app. Believe it or not, I do not speak Hungarian. Um, so in translating it, it was completely fine. He was very communicative. He worked very quickly. And I love getting to know the manufacturers a little bit. And so I just asked him, I was like, hey, how did you get into this? And he told me that, you know, he's, I believe he's in his early 60s in Hungary. And as an eight-year-old boy, he began learning Morse code. Um, he mentioned, I think he has a background. I think he does some electrical work. He's an electrician. I think he says he loves to cook. He's a cook. He, it sounds like he has a few different hats that he wears as far as professions, but Morse code is just a passion of his, um, and he manufactures these keys. Another thing I think he does is some POTA keys, so who knows? I think over time I'll eventually uh, purchase another key from him, but this has one of my first keys, the HA8KF, just rock solid. Um, I will say, I, I want to be careful, but the, the reviews on DX Engineering, some of them um, I, I noticed some of them were a little, so most of them are positive, but there were a few negative reviews. Somebody left a negative review because it comes with a quarter inch. This is pretty common on European keys. Um, you know, you can, you know how easy it is to cut this and re-solder? I really should just solder on an eighth inch. I just threw this on because it's so easy. But uh, I don't think that's a reason to not like the key, personally. <laughs> just my opinion. Some Some transceivers popular transceivers actually accept the quarter inch adapter but uh that's my ha8kf absolutely love this key and how cool is it that it's from hungary All right, a lot of you guys will recognize uh, these keys. I just did an unboxing video. Uh, the ZN9ZX is the key I just got. And uh, this is a dual lever and this is a single lever. So you'll notice a single lever here where both of these paddles are off and then a dual lever or iambic paddle on the left. So this is the ZNSL and the ZN9ZX. And I love N3ZN keys. Uh, these keys are out of Pennsylvania, USA. Tony, the creator of N3ZN, uh, he's, he's a great guy with phenomenal service. And I purchased this key as well as the ZN Lite. It's not going to be included in this video because this just is base station keys. I'm not going to do any of my POTA keys uh, today. But these are my base station keys from N3ZN. Absolutely love them. They are tanks. Uh, anything over three pounds is going to get a lot of love from me. This one's uh, just over three pounds, pretty much right on the dot. And then we have a three pound four ounce. Uh, gotta love those additional four ounces on the uh, single lever here. But um, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you guys. So these come uh, completely wired from the factory. 
Uh, they do have serial numbers on them. I really like serial numbers on my keys. I think that's kind of cool. Um, and he does wire, I'll show you guys, it's, it's the same on both of these, but it's an eighth inch uh, plug. So that's nice. Most, oh, pretty much most keys will come with that. Some, like I said, from Europe do come with a quarter inch. But this was my first single lever, and I could not have picked a better single lever manufacturer. This thing is, is a, a ton of fun to send on. The N3ZN keys, um, they have some of the best adjustments. The adjustments are just made with thumb screws. So these are the contacts, and then we have magnet adjustments here at the front. But uh, yeah, uh, not too much to say other than N3ZN is extremely high quality. I love having keys made from all over the world, but you guys know it's nice to have a USA manufacturer that does it of such high quality. So the big thing I'll tell you with N3ZN is there's a number of color variations that he does. So he does some round keys with some really cool colors. So check out his website and see some of the color options he has. All right, guys, obviously a little bit of a different display here. I'll just label it. My son's name is Finn, so anything with Finn in it, we uh, we kind of latch on to. But this is my uh, OH1KB Tapio from Finland. It's his KBX380 is what this paddle is called. So you'll notice it kind of says the uh, KBX CW team right there. And uh, this is one, one of the first paddles I bought. Uh, this is a very economical option. He charges a really competitive price for a paddle of this quality. Um, gosh, I, I think this paddle is so far, it's one of the heavier ones we've looked at. It's one of the heaviest out of my entire collections. It's three pounds, 5.8 ounces. And it's just, it's just a beast. It has a good size to it. And one of the really cool things about this paddle is it does have a number of color variations. So he does some cool different colors with some of the thumb screws, the paddles. Uh, check out K9 KJ. He has a couple really cool color options with this paddle. Uh, where it was one of the first paddles I bought, I don't know. I wasn't feeling super uh, uh, colorful. I just, I just kind of went with silver and black. That's the way I went. He did engrave my call sign, check that out. Um, I love having my call sign on there. And he has a few options here. I, I obviously wanted the Finnish flag with the, with the US. Like I said, I love anything with Finland on it. I have zero Finnish blood in me. Uh, in fact, my little brother got his ancestry DNA and he was like 1% Finnish and it kind of pissed me off. I was like, hey, you know, I should be 1% Finnish. My son's name is Finn. <laughs> but uh, yeah, really love this, uh, love this paddle. I, I failed, I'm going to try to just put some writing on the last two chapters of keys I did, but I failed to mention a couple times whether paddles were magnetic or spring. So uh, on the on the KBX380, this is a spring return, meaning uh, the spring tension is what sets the, the return on these paddles versus magnetic. In the industry, magnetic is considered superior. It it's typically carries a, a heftier price, but it does not, in my opinion, always indicate better quality. Um, I have a number of spring uh, tension paddles that are exceptional, and the KBX380 is one of them. Um, this key rocks. So. Uh, yeah, maybe you guys will like the kind of triangle design. This is my only paddle with this type of shape. Um, you'll like the color options he provides. The adjustments are relatively simple. Um, it's, it's just a, a locking nut here that you undo, and then you can, you can do some tightening of the spacing here. Um, this, these adjustments back here are uh, more complicated. It's not hard to do, but it just takes more time. So I've done quite a bit of uh, stripping and uh, adjustments to get this kind of exactly how I like it. Um, I'm a lot like K9KJ in that I like tight, responsive paddles. 
And so I got this one set up exactly how I like it. Not hard to do, um, but a little bit more work than some of the other paddles. All right, this is the March Magnetic. Uh, I've really got to kind of move it around so you guys can see just how stunning it is. But I did choose these lava paddles. Oh, sorry, let me get it disconnected from my little uh, trainer here. But yeah, these, uh, these lava paddles are just really, really cool. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, he has quite a bit of customization as well. So... This is a brass base, um, and, and by the way, he's out of uh, Virginia, I believe. But you'll notice kind of a rosewood inlay. I told him I'd seen that he did this sort of uh, striped design up and down. So I said, hey, give me that, give me these lava paddles, and I like this base. And I don't know if you can see, but my call sign is engraved. I kind of like where he locates it. It's kind of discreet, but my call sign's in there. Um, adjustments on this key are, are similarly easy to other one to other keys with kind of the lock nut, but just thumb screw with a lock nut to position it. And uh, man, this key it's it's a it's a tank as well. I believe it's it's three pounds five ounces roughly, um, and it's just beautiful. You know, he has a really iconic, just kind of cool, unique design. And I'll be honest, guys, I, I definitely have keys that I just feel really, really comfortable with sending on. I can send on anything because I have like 100 keys, but keys that I feel just a lot of confidence and they're just, you, you kind of enjoy sending on them, this is one of them. Um, I don't know what it is, but something about this key I just really, really enjoy. Um, not just the aesthetic. The aesthetic alone is awesome, but it's fun when it looks this cool. And then it's such a, a, pl a pleasure, a joy uh, to send on. But, you know, he does do some really cool... He has like an antique finish one. I, I might get another uh, March paddle uh, at some point just because I like it so much. But, uh, sorry, my son's like screaming upstairs. But, uh, yeah, these, these, are, these are pretty sweet. So, um, one, of, one of my favorite paddles for sure. And I almost forgot, uh, he does just come with the uh, female 3.5 millimeter, so the female 1 8 inch, um, which is great. I just plug a, a paddle right in, and or a cable right in, and it works. So. These are the Kent keys, both the iambic and the single lever, um, or the twin paddle or single paddle as they call them. Uh, I thought these were manufactured in the UK. Uh, my uncle K7CO said the same thing. Sure enough, when I went to order them, um, I then learned that they're not manufactured in the UK. These are uh, Kent Morse keys, Germany, as you see on the badge. Uh, so. I don't know if you if you ever thought that too. Let me know why you know why did I think at one point that these were British keys? But no, they're ma manufactured in Germany, uh, shipped from. Actually, I actually think they shipped from the Netherlands. I'm not totally sure as to why. But uh, these are spring tension keys with with really great weight. Um, the single paddle weighs approximately two pounds six ounces. The twin paddle weighs two pounds nine ounces. But anything, you know, once we get north of two pounds, we're into pretty good territory with weight. Uh, the closer to two and a half pounds, the better. 
anything north of that, like a lot of the keys I have up here today are three pounds plus. Those are great. Um, but even this, you know, this, this single lever has quite a small, this may be one of my most uh, narrow, narrowest keys. I like that it takes up a small footprint and then the, the dual is one of my widest, the, the twin paddle. It's almost like two of the singles and it's my, by far my widest, I meant widest base, but it's also one of the widest um, just gaps in the dual lever, but I just think it's pretty cool. Uh, I think these paddles have really uh, good design. They're simple, really beautiful finish on them. Easy adjustments on the spring tensions. There's a locking nut as well. You guys have seen this on a bunch of my keys so far. They do come uh, with a soldered, um, just, just a solder ready wire. So the wire is just uh, uh, bare wire and you do need to solder on uh, the eighth inch or whatever preference you have. So you'll notice I, I have a bunch of these lying around. So these were just different ones I did. I did right angle adapters on, but easy, easy to do. For someone that's built a few uh, radios, that's never an issue to put those on. Um, but yeah, really enjoy the Kent Keys. They have great weight. Uh, I like that they do both a single and a dual lever. I picked up both, obviously. This is the Vibroplex Vibro Keyer Standard. Kind of a fun fact on this one. This is the only key that I tried before I buy it. Now, at Hamvention, I did buy two N3ZN keys that I messed around with, but I kind of already knew I was buying them no matter what, and then sure, sending on them only, conf only confirmed my interest in the keys. But this is one I was uh, not planning to purchase at all and I probably didn't, didn't even know what it was. I think when I walked up to it I thought it was a bug. Vibroplex has a great booth and uh, they had all of their keys uh, wired up and as you guys know at Hamvention I was uh, looking for single levers. I purchased the N3ZN and I saw this Vibro keyer which is their single lever and you know out of the gate is it to me is it the most attractive key that I own? Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, you know, Vibroplex is a pretty iconic uh, key manufacturer, and everyone I think associates Vibroplex with the bug. Uh, I almost got a second Vibroplex this week. I was bidding on a bug on eBay, but I ended up losing. Uh, but I tell you what, um, I, I, I just all I did was send on it at Hamvention, and I was like, I really like the way this feels. Um, I, I like the way it sounds. I, I just really liked it. And to date, at my base station, I think I have my maybe my best batting average with this key as far as like I just don't make a ton of mistakes with it. I don't know why. Uh, I just send really well on it. Um, uh, again, I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason to that, but it's it's really a great key. Uh, and so I actually I didn't buy it at Hamvention, but sending on it. Uh, while I was there, I, I just ordered it online and uh, had it shipped to me. And uh, I, I, I had like a just a backpack with me. So it got to a point I didn't want to keep adding, you know, three pound keys in my backpack because I was purchasing some uh, N3ZNs there. Now, uh, this key is hefty. It's two pounds, 12 ounces. So it's, it's a phenomenal weight. It is, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. I think it's a spring tension. It's definitely not magnetic. Um, it's got some interesting... Uh, uh, you know, however they manufacture it. I don't even know if I could explain it to you guys. I haven't done a ton of adjusting to this other than just kind of, you know, the distance to the contacts up front and back. So I am, I'm not the guy to maybe give you guys full walkthroughs of how, um, but this is, you know, your locking nuts. I've done some examples of that so far, and uh, I probably have a lot to learn about how to adjust it, but so far it works, it works great for me just as is. Um, they do make a few variations of this key, so if you want the, not the standard, but like a higher end, they sell two or three versions. One, one of them is gold and it's, it's pretty pricey, um, but this, for what it is at this price, um, I, think it's, I think it's great. Now it does come, you guys are familiar with the Vibroplex 
the way their uh, wiring is. They actually, this is a key, uh, sorry, a cable manufactured by Vibroplex uh, that comes with a right angle adapter um, and works great. Really like this key. Uh, again, it's maybe not going to be something that you walk into my office or my shack and you say, oh, wow, tell me about this one. But it just works. Uh, and, you know, I think it's something where if you want a more inexpensive key, this is a great option. There's definitely some of you that have been waiting for this portion of the video. Uh, there's a lot of Big Ollie fans out there. I am one of them. These are Italian Morse code keys, and they are of the highest quality. Uh, they come you know, from the manufacturer, the fit, the finish, uh, the presentation from Big Ollie. It's, it's always perfect, exquisite. It, it is uh, top shelf. Uh, it's, it's really great. So just from left to right, um, this is my Simplex. Now this is a Simplex Professional. I don't know if I could tell you the difference between the Professional and some of the other Simplex, but this is my first ever uh, kind of base station key that I invested in. Uh, I think I had like a CW Moore straight key and maybe a couple other uh, cheap keys out of the gate. But this was my first ever key and I bought a Begali because, you know, Christian Herter told me to spend good money on a key in one of his YouTube videos. And uh, I did that out of the gate, and then I did it, like, I don't know how many more times. Um, but this is my first key. I contacted my friend Tim, K5OHY, on this key back on March 26th, my first CW QSO. I'm pretty sure I didn't make a single error uh, in my first QSO, and it's probably because I was sending on a Begali. It is a spring uh, tension. Uh, with very easy adjustments and it's uh, it's quite beautiful uh, originally I tried to get this in turtle when I went to order it but they did not have turtle so I got it in blue and then I ended up getting the next key which I'll tell you about which is the Leonessa uh, the Leonessa I think it has something to do with the city uh, where Begali is located um, this key is I mean this is one of my what's funny is it's both a single and dual lever I really just like it as a dual. Um, I've, I've tried to do the adjustment for the single, and if you guys own this key, maybe maybe reach out to me. If you love it as a single lever, reach out to me because I may I may want to pick your brain on the uh, setting it as a single lever. Because when I did it once, it was a little uh, I didn't love the feel of it as a single, but as a dual, I love it. It is such a good key, um, and as far as the aesthetic goes, it's one of my favorite keys as far as the look. I love the turtle finish. Um, it's it's just it's just beautiful. I, I don't know if the video will really do it justice, but the Begali keys, the way they're presented, the way that they, they're designed, it's like that that Italian engineering, that that Italian kind of a Ferrari type of key. And so the Simplex Professional is my only spring tension. The other two are magnetic. And uh, this one, again, the adjustments are, are very simple. It's just, it's just thumb screws to adjust with the magnets as well as the contacts. Um, this piece is where you do adjust it to a single lever, I believe. Uh, that's where I've done it. Um, but I just keep it as an iambic. Uh, love this key. It weighs, sorry guys, real fast. This one does weigh uh, 2 pounds, 14 ounces. This is a hefty three pounds 15 ounces love this other than my ha8kf this is my heaviest key and then you guys know i did an unboxing of my bigali uh, 70th anniversary and uh i love that this so this key weighs three pounds three ounces which in its small fit and finish it's a very hefty heavy key i wanted it i wanted something with 2024 engraved 
to kind of memorialize, commemorate the year I began learning CW and began operating CW. And this key, uh, I've had a few people think it's the sculpture. It's not. It's the Stradivarius, which I did not know how to say that until my Uncle John, K7CO, told me it's called the Stradivarius. That's after uh, he was talking to me about like high-end violins and my, my Uncle John is uh, quite sophisticated. I wasn't very familiar with the uh, violin manufacturers, but he was, he was telling me about that. And got my call sign engraved on all of these paddles. Uh, in fact, my call sign's on all of my paddles except for the two. If I order the video the way I think I did, the only paddles I have that do not have my call sign engraved are the ones I just showed, the Kent Keys and the Vibroplex, uh, Vibro Keyer, which I, I don't really care. I don't need my call sign on all paddles. But uh, these big all these guys, um, I, I really do recommend them, uh, even if even as an entry level key. Like if you want the simplex, this is a very affordable and it has a great feel. I did swap out, so I, I should say I did upgrade. Upgrade. Uh, they have metal paddles. They come with plastic. I did put metal on here. I actually think the plastic ones feel good too, though. So I did that more so for the color. Um, and I'll say this too, just real fast. My personal preference from a manufacturer is that the key shows up with a jack like this, and then I gotta just do my own cable. Some of them show up from Europe with quarter inch adapters. Some of them show up with just the wire, and you've got a wire on a eighth inch uh, plug. Um, but the Gollies, great service. They ship fast. They're typically ready to made, ready, uh, ready to ship. They're already made. But you can reach out, and they'll typically let you know about certain availability for colors and so on. But yeah, man, the Gollies is uh, definitely high end, very nice, and uh, I'll say it, they're pretty sexy, right? They look great. All right, guys, this is my W1SFR Green Machine. That might be the coolest named paddle that I have. This is from Steve Roberts, W1SFR out of Vermont. And if you want a tip or trick on how to tell it's from Vermont, check out this stone. This is a stone exclusive to Vermont, uh, the state of Vermont. How cool is that? So this is called the Green Machine. It is a torsion key. Um, he's got it serialized for me at the bottom. And it's it's just a stunning green color. And you know, so far I've been talking about whether keys are magnetic or spring. My understanding is torsion bar is kind of its own thing. I could be wrong there. Uh, setting this is very simple. It's just some uh, a locking nut with some thumb screws. And you gotta love that he was willing to put my call sign on there. He'll do that for you too. But just a really cool uh, stone. This stone is sourced from Vermont all over the world because it's so rare and so unique. And obviously so beautiful with the polish on it. Um, I love a natural stone like this as part of my key. So he does, he's, he's really well known for, uh, I, I believe he's pretty involved in SKCC. Uh, the Straight Key Century Club. Uh, he does do uh, cooties and swipe, uh, side swapper, swipers, side swipers and cooties. I couldn't tell you what those even mean. I don't know what those are. I think Aaron W4ARB has a video with him on a cootie, which is, uh, that's pretty freaking sweet. I, I'll have to branch out and learn that. But the way he wires this for me is just a single lever. Um, so it, it's just an awesome key. I will say on this key, the note I will make is it's far and away my lightest. So uh, it's it's one pound five ounces, which is which is really light uh, for a key. So on my base station, I typically have it up against other keys, or I kind of just have it secured. You saw me send on it just barely. It really doesn't move that much, even for a light key. I think just the way it's a torsion bar. I don't, I don't know if the mechanism here is what creates such great stability, but like he has a Titan key. Look up his Titan key. It's the same design, but it's like a silver. Oh man, I, I can't even, it, it looks awesome. And I think it's over three pounds. I think I would really like that one, especially because of its weight. 
but this is just a cool key. Um, I I will say the reason I'm excited to share this with you guys too is I don't I don't see a lot of YouTube uh, CW guys with the W1 SFR. Maybe I need to find them and you guys could point me in them direct in their direction. I see a lot of Begali's, you know. I see a lot of uh, other kind of mainstream keys. The W1 SFR I haven't seen a ton of people at least with the green machine, let alone. Oh, you know what? I think there is. Um, I don't want to mistake who it is. There is a YouTuber that does have the W1 SFR, the key I might have just told you about. I think he has the Titan. Um, I forget who it is. But uh, but yeah, this is a really cool key and love that it's US made. Um, it does come wired with a uh, right angle adapter for eighth inch. And uh, they're built to order. And they're pretty sweet. So uh, yeah, I love my uh, green machine. guys these are the UR5 CDX I have a dual and a single from them um, my dual lever is one of the first keys I bought I bought it right after uh, the Bigali Simplex Professional so I bought the Bigali Simplex Professional then I bought the Tapio KBX 380 and then I did buy the UR5 CDX really the fault of Evan K2EJT in New York he did a video comparing it to his Bigali I can't remember what Bugali he has. It's different from mine, but I actually commented on his video at the time. Uh, hey, this is your fault. I bought another key, and and I actually don't think I had made a single CWQ so at that time. So my key collection has started pretty early, but uh, I think he has this exact key where it was similar. But this is the CT599MX on the left, and then the CT755B on the right. And you'll notice on both of them, I do have my call sign engraved. Um, so they do this kind of engraving, and then they also do another, they sell another kind. So I, I mixed and matched for their different types of engraving. But you'll notice, I don't know if the video will do it justice right now, but these are a little bit dirty. And this is pretty common uh, with, with brass uh, keys or keys of this style. So I'm going to show you guys that with just some horsehair, just a horsehair brush, how quickly I can make this key look good as new. And uh, I kind of got the camera in the way, so I can't quite, quite see. But you know, if you if you invest in one of these little brushes and you get a key like this, just just brush it off every so often, and you you are good to go. I mean, these I could brush my teeth in this thing. This thing looks looks fantastic. I've got a couple smudges here. I'll show you. Uh, this product is called Cape Cod, uh, and this is like you want to talk ASMR. Uh, just throw some rubber gloves on and polish your metal keys with this this stuff. It smells incredible. It'll leave an incredible finish on either of these finishes here, but I can't recommend this enough. So uh, my brother, my my younger brother, my wife, uh, friends, when people come into my shack and they kind of skim over my collection, I ask them what their favorite key is, and a lot of them point to this guy. And I have to agree, as far as just the look, it looks so sleek, has a beautiful shimmer to it. Um, my buddy Steve, WI5D, I did a short, and he said this was his favorite. I said, you have a great eye. Um, these keys are awesome. And I'll tell you what, for the price, these are the most inexpensive magnetic return keys out there. Uh, these are very affordable. Um, I'll include, again, there's a spreadsheet with the pricing, but this guy is very inexpensive. This is a great price as well. Um, they do have a little bit more of a mechanical uh, sound just with these acrylic, uh, I don't know exactly what they're called, these types of paddles. The single lever is actually a little bit even louder. Um, I, I don't mind that at all. Um, if I had to tell you my favorite of the two, I love both single and dual, but I do like this guy a little bit more. Um, I, I think just the feel of it is, is slightly better. Than, uh, than my single. I may just need to adjust this one a little bit more. They do come, like I've said, some European keys do come from the factory. Um, both of them come, obviously, the 
the silver is a silver end, which I just I think is cool. So you, you guys can see. Um, they come from the factory with the quarter inch. I really should just cut them and, and rewire, but I don't I don't really care. These actually don't I don't plug these directly into my I do not plug these directly into my uh, uh, transceivers. Uh, I actually have an extension, so everything gets connected kind of underneath and behind. So it doesn't matter to me that it's this hefty kind of connection. But yeah, the UR5 CDX out of Ukraine. Uh, great, great paddles. Did I already say the weight? Let me make sure I do include that. So the CT599 is two pounds, 11 ounces here on the left. And then the CT755B is uh, two pounds, seven ounces, both phenomenal weights. And I will say this, so just for a little bit of a cross reference, um, this key at two pounds, 11 ounces is three ounces lighter than the Bigali Simplex Professional, but its center of gravity and its, its key height, and Evan talks about this in one of his videos, the, the feel of this one and just, just the center of gravity, it, it'll move less often than my Simplex Professional, simply because my Simplex Professional is, is more concise, it's higher, and its keys are lifted up uh, higher off the desk. This one, even, at a, even being three pounds lighter, is a little bit more solid on my desk than the uh, Simplex Professional. Both are solid, but I'm saying if you stack them head to head, um, don't, don't always assume with weight that heavier means, oh, okay, it's not gonna move as often. Um, I showed you guys the torsion bar, the green machine, even at a light weight, the way it's manufactured, it, it, it doesn't move. I, it, it, I'll say it moves more than any of my other kids just because it's so light, but you know the way the weight's distributed, it has an impact. So uh, those are the UR5 CDX. All right guys, the uh, key video would not be complete if I didn't share my favorite key, and I know many of you would ask what my favorite key is. Uh, hands down, it is my Sure key. Um, this was a gift from my uncle John K7CO. I did a video on it. This is my grandfather's call sign, uh, AF7Y, and, and uh, it, it just means the world to me. This is a key they went out to. My, my uncle was actually living in Germany, and I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but there's a major ham fest that occurs out there. And they purchased this uh, Sure Key. Sure Keys, as you guys know, are iconic in the industry. And to get my hands on a Sure Key is special enough, but for it to be something that belonged to my grandpa and to have his call sign, and for my uncle to uh, to be willing to gift that to me, um, you can obviously imagine how meaningful that is. And uh, I tell you what, even in a small fit and finish, this weighs almost, it's, it's right under two pounds. Um, but it just has great feel, and uh, it's just it's just cool. Sure keys are are uh, iconic Morse code keys that are no longer manufactured, and uh, it's really special uh, to have one for my grandpa. So um, this will stay in my family forever. All right, guys, uh, we are on to the last keys of the video. And every section of this video was filmed about five or six days ago. And then this guy got lost in transit uh, with my local post office. So it got to Provo and then went to Salt Lake and then went back to Provo and then ended up in Spanish Fork. Extremely frustrating with something so precious and so valuable. But, uh, but yeah, the unboxing today is gonna be an RA1 AOM key. And uh, my goodness, these keys are absolutely stunning. They are breathtaking. And forgive me for saying it, but I have saved the best for last. I absolutely love my RA1 AOM keys. I love the purchasing process. I love that Val RA1 AOM in Russia sends me uh, blanks of stones and I pick which stone I want and then he cuts it to different shapes. These keys are just amazing. They are beasts. They're incredibly sophisticated in their design. Um, they're just awesome. So without any further ado, uh, let's get on. I'm actually going to try to open this from the bottom because it looks easier, but let's, uh, Let's get this puppy opened up and take a look at my brand new RA1 AOM key shipped to me from Russia 
by way of Estonia. So I'm be very careful. I do have a couple uh, goods in this package for some other hams that I happen to be uh, pretty good friends with. And uh, Vel asked me if I would be willing to help out with something like that, and I said, of course. Um, so sorry, guys, let me get this open here. Here we go. All right. Oh yeah. The the funny thing about RE1 AOM keys is they're just always bigger when they show up than you think which is a very good thing. And he's definitely got these packaged to be completely protected. Oh, wow. I don't know if the camera's gonna catch that, but there's just a beautiful kind of a sparkle to this white marble. My goodness. Wow. That is pretty cool. Oh, and the feel is just amazing. I haven't even adjusted it. So guys, something I'm very excited about is uh, and I, I really appreciate him giving me this opportunity, but I'm the first ever recipient of this uh, design in the United States. I believe he, he created another one kind of uh, concurrently. It was for a, for a local ham and to him, local ham to him in Russia. And, uh, but this, this specific design of a single lever, I'm the first one to receive it. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. I'll throw a picture up right now. I've actually decided to create a, a QSL card um, if any of you have received a QSL card from me up until now, you'll, you'll probably notice it's not, it's not super high quality. I've been using photocopy uh, paper uh, for my printer and I've been printing kind of just what looks like a photo. But uh, I did work with uh, KB3IFH. Um, his name's Randy. He does QSL cards. Um, so I just purchased uh, a lot of QSL cards from him with this design. So. I'll throw that picture up, but I'm excited to start sending uh, QSL cards. And kind of a fun fact, so uh, no joke, I got a couple other things in the mail today. So one of them was my QSL card from, this is my buddy Jason uh, in California. And uh, really appreciate him sending me this. So Jason, if you're, if you're okay to be a little patient, it's going to take a week or two before I get my new QSL cards in. But you'll be the first recipient of my new QSL card featuring uh, this RA1 AOM paddle. So... Um, oh yeah, and I also got a fun fact, Jason, KM4CFT. So WI5D and K7CO, you guys know, those are uh, good buddies of mine. They both messaged me like the same day about uh, this five band radio that KM4CFT Jonathan is creating. So I actually reached out to Jonathan about it. Um, and I think that's still kind of it's something he's going to release in the future. And I'll just have to be lucky enough to grab one of the initial release. But he did tell me he does an iambic paddle. And so I bought this from him. I think he sells these on, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think I bought them on eBay. But he was nice enough to put my call sign on there. So I am going to do a video here soon uh, using his Poda key, but it looks really cool. But anyway, um, now we're going to continue on to the RA1 AOM segment. But I did want to do that unboxing and just talk about how much I love these keys. And something I'm going to do now is actually wire this guy up. So these keys do come exactly like you see, uh, ready to be soldered. So I actually put a rather long 
just right angle adapter or right angle uh, eighth inch plug on it. So let me get this one wired up and then we'll uh, do some sending with it. You guys know I didn't get that on the first take. Alright guys, so the final details on these uh, two RA1 AOM keys, absolutely love them, uh, beautiful keys. Uh, just a reminder as I conclude the video, I do have a spreadsheet with all the details on these keys, their weights, their origins, and the prices that I paid at the time of this video, which is obviously subject to change. Um, but man, I absolutely love the RA1 AOM keys. You can see I have both the iambic and the single lever, and he does a variety of designs. So when you reach out to Val in Russia, um, feel free to ask you know a number of questions related to uh, you know the designs and the options available. And think something I really appreciate is I I do feel like he innovates quite a bit, and I notice he comes up with new or different styles pretty frequently. So in the future, when you reach out to him, he may have a variety of, of new keys or new designs that you can choose from, which I just think is really cool and I think goes to show his passion that he has. Um, something I love about Val too, I feel like I've formed a pretty good friendship with him and just just continuing to discuss CW and check out his, his QRZ page, but it's somebody like Val in Russia and knowing his history of, uh, you know, obviously residing in Russia during a time of the Soviet Union the fact that I believe, and I could be mistaken, he was above, he was aboard ships, and he instructed, I believe, close to 400, uh, uh, you know, telegraph operators, Morse code oper operators, which I just think is really incredible, and it's, it's pretty fun for me at my age to feel like I get to know someone like that, and I get to be a part of their journey, they get to be a part of my journey, and how they've influenced Morse code, how they've influenced CW and ham radio, and to have a couple pieces, a couple of artifacts of that person, I think is really cool. I actually reached out to Val as well. We have a, a really cool art museum just north of me in Springville, and they have an entire floor uh, dedicated to the Soviet Union and Soviet era art. Uh, so I sent him a video of that. My wife and I were at that museum, and I said, hey, if you have any cool uh, USSR period uh, telegraph keys, please let me know because I want to talk to the people at that museum and say, hey, here's a pretty cool piece of history. So I don't know if Val will ever take me up on that, but just love the story, love the history. And these keys are amazing. So a little bit uh, more detail. Um, something that's cool on the iambic paddle is you'll notice he does do like a carbon fiber design. I don't know if the video will show that. And on both these keys, so this is Oh, I don't want to screw it up. I think it's like a Jasper stone or something like that. Somebody could correct me in the comments. He will send you blanks and you can choose. And he has different stone shapes. But these are, I mean, guys, tell me this isn't something out of Star Wars as far as like how cool that looks. We have magnetic returns on both of these paddles. So these are magnetic, not spring tension. And man, they're just so cool. So the story on this one, something I actually appreciate about Val is... It seems like every time I finish up an order with him, the, the email he lets me know that it has shipped, he typically floats out another product that he has. So when I bought this, he's like, oh, by the way, I do do single levers. And I was like, okay, well, just at that time, as you guys know, I got interested in single levers. And uh, so I ordered one. And when this one shipped, he said, oh, by the way, I do poda keys, which is like the worst thing you could have told me because you guys know me. I, I pretty much exclusively do field operations. But... Uh, uh, something with this stone that I did want to mention is I asked him, you know, I, I kind of thought, okay, I have red, maybe I want blue now. 
And he told me about this hexagonal shape and that he, it's a marble. And so I said, do you do blue? And he's like, no, it's, it's a little harder to find blue. But he's, I think I said blue and white because this is like red and white. So I said, do blue and white. He's like, I couldn't do blue, but he's like, I, I probably have some good white options. So he sent me this marble and it's really beautiful. Um, it has some dark hues, but I just love, you know, he does a stone and then he does these really uh, hefty stainless steel bases on them to add weight strong opinion if you're going to do a stone key having a base like this on it and i'm actually surprised these are under three pounds i would have guessed they were well north of that these do not move on my on my base station desk these are these are rock solids as promised this is the portion of the video where i'm going to recommend some uh, budget keys and when i say budget keys i, I don't own any keys that are cheap um, and neither should you. Uh, if you want a quality iambic paddle for your base station, spend some good money. Um, that wasn't my advice. I fabricated out of nowhere. That has been my experience, but that was advice given to me uh, by Christian Herter, uh, and I think it's advice uh, kind of throughout. Now, there's a number of, of quality keys that, that aren't expensive, and and um, but you know I'm going to show you three keys that are below $200 uh, sticker price. Now, the caveat is I think after you pay tax or shipping, depending, some of these you won't you won't pay tax because they're foreign, but on all of these, after, you know, out the door costs, you will probably be a little bit north of 200, barely north of 200 on, on these three keys. So um, from left to right, it's the Vibroplex, uh, Vibro Key uh, Standard. Then you do have the Bigali Simplex. They make a few variations of this. This one's the Professional, which I think is a little bit more, and I couldn't tell you why. Um, so just look at a Simplex. They're essentially the same key. And then this is a UR5 CDX. That's the CT, ooh, now I'm gonna forget. It's the 599MX. Um, I can't remember if it's a CT in front of it, or let's see here. Yep, CT-599MX. Um, and these are our three phenomenal keys. Uh, this one's the lightest, but this one may be the most stout as far as just sitting on the desk and it's not going to move. Um, but they're all pretty comparable in weight. They all have great weights. I cannot say anything. If, if there were anything wrong with any of these keys, I wouldn't make recommendations at the end of this video for these three. But from my experience, my collection, if anyone came to me and they said, hey, you know, what should my first key be? And I really, I want to spend like the bare minimum necessary to get a quality key. These would probably be my top three. So if you think you like single levers, you want to get in single levers, this would be the single lever option. They do make iambic paddles. I haven't used their iambic paddle, um, but I have to imagine it's comparable. Comparable. It's, it's just really, really good quality. The Begali's, the fit and finish, like I've said, they just come from the factory. Uh, and they just work. They're super solid. And then I love this UR5 CDX. I think it's a, a really, really good value. Um, and it's magnetic return. So this is the only one here that's magnetic as well. Uh, I do love how they do the call sign engraving. Begali offers that option as well. Uh, so that's something you can do. You will not have that option on Vibroplex. But you can get creative. There's engravers local to you. Uh, just look them up. I've actually done that on a Poda key. I took it to a gun shop and they engraved my call sign on it. So those are the budget keys. Um, again, all pricing is in the description. All right, contrasting the budget selection, this is gonna be my, I don't even know what to call it. Should I call it the big baller keys? Um, these are, uh, you know, these are gonna be north of probably $400 roughly, some a lot more than that. Uh, but I do wanna make a recommendation on really high-end keys if you're looking at getting some and there's a couple stipulations with this so it, it, i'm almost more so recommending the higher end of this these manufacturers so starting with the ra1 aom um you know i have the single lever and the iambic either of those are exceptional the single lever is actually quite a bit less expensive the marble i believe is cheaper to source this is not a marble this is i forget what this stone is called but um this is just a more expensive key the mechanism this is uh astounding when you unbox it it is the, the video won't do it justice but i promise you the day an ra1 aom shows up at your doorstep 
and you unbox it, you will appreciate um, more than any other key. And, and it's not a knock on anyone else, but just it, it's like something out of Star Wars. It's just it's um, it's hefty. It's big. It's it complicated in a good way. Um, and it's beautiful. I love the buying experience of choosing my stone. It's it's this is a very personal key to me. I formed a good relationship with Val. I think he does a phenomenal job. He's a great communicator and everyone I know that has one of these keys love it. So uh, if you know if you're looking at the RI1 AOM and you're thinking about it, please, please, please pull the trigger. Uh, the next one, the Begali. I chose the Leonessa. I could have pulled the uh, Stradivarius over here. My my point with Begali is if you're looking at a high-end key, any of their keys, like I know people that have the Contour, the Pearl, um, and those are a little bit, I can't remember pricing on all of their keys. You know, the pricings are in the descriptions. I even link their websites on my Google Sheet. But like the Sculpture, the Janus, um, I don't know how to pronounce all of them. But if you go get one of those Begali's, even my Simplex Professional that I said on the budget side, once you go up from there, I, I think for the most part, um, you're going to have a really, really solid key and you'll really like it. Um, but uh, but yeah, can't can't recommend Begali enough. And then yeah, N3 ZN. Um, you know, I could have the single lever here. This is the ZN uh, Z X-ray. Shoot, I keep screwing I keep screwing these up. I'm really bad at remembering the the specific models of these keys. But yeah, it's the ZN 9 Z X-ray. Yep, with the 3 8 inch. Uh, I forget exactly how he measures it, but it's the tight spacing. You can do whatever spacing you want. And I actually noticed just on his website, uh, looking at it, he is on the single lever. He's saying that for, I think it's an extra 20 bucks. You can do your own color variation off of the colors he offers, which that's really cool. Like if, if I could go back and I'd have the option of kind of customizing my single lever, I probably would instead of just a standard black, the black looks great, but there's some options there. But the weight of the, these keys, the feel of the, the keys, um, this is high class. So whether you want to just spend really good money on one key to have or you're interested in, in getting a collection and you want to have some higher end keys, um, these are some phenomenal uh, manufacturers and you, you just can't go wrong with, with uh, their high end keys that they sell.